Back during my freshman year of college, I remember getting assigned a 10 page paper. And this was the longest paper I've ever had to write in my entire life. Like it was a challenge for me back then, okay? And I remember this day so vividly. All right, because guess what I did? I saved this 10 page paper for the last day before it was due. So the day before it's due, I wake up. First thing I do is I take Adderall, right? Because that was back when I was taking Adderall every day. If you don't know what that is, it is a prescription drug that basically spikes your dopamine. It makes you more focused and alert. So I, I took my Adderall. Next thing I do, I walk over to the edge of my room, crack the window open and take a bong rip. And so now I'm high on Adderall and high on weed, all while having a 10 page paper due the next day. And I remember I planned this day out with my buddies because there were two other guys in my class who hadn't started the paper yet and we were both, all three of us were stoners and we all smoked our weed and then we went to the cafeteria, got some food and made it to a private room in the library. And so, you know, I'm sitting down, laptop and phone right in front of me with a vape in my left hand and I have to write 10 pages by the next morning. I'm sitting there, right, trying to write my first few sentences, and meanwhile I'm high, thinking, oh, if I get stoned, I'll be more focused, right? I'll be more relaxed so I can focus better. That's such a cope, by the way. If you still smoke weed and you think it helps you do your homework, fuck that, it's a cope. You're dumb. I was dumb. The Adderall's kicking in, so I'm like starting to focus, getting all like sweaty and shit. Start writing my first few sentences. Oh, notification on my phone. Of course, I check it, right? Now my focus is diverted and I'm on my phone. Put my phone down. Oh, now I'm gonna rip my vape. Get my little nicotine fix. It took all fucking day for me to finish this paper. And I barely hit the 10 page mark, like barely. I had to write some fluff at the end just to get to that 10 page mark. My friends and I, we were in that private room. It sounds fucking weird. We were in that room for 10 hours, I wanna say, from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. at night. One of the hardest assignments I ever had to do. And it's no wonder I couldn't do it. Because if you look at my lifestyle back then, I was indulging in all the instant gratification. I mean, think about it. That morning I woke up and smoked weed. That morning I woke up and popped Adderall. That morning I probably woke up and scrolled on Instagram before even getting out of bed. So now my brain is already fried at this point. Like to go and sit down and do this 10 page paper, what do you think my brain is gonna prefer? Is it gonna prefer that weed that I just smoked? Is it gonna prefer the social media that I just scrolled on? Or is it gonna prefer sitting down and writing and doing a hard task. Obviously it's gonna prefer the weed in the social media because those are comfortable, those are easy, those are instant gratification. It's no wonder I couldn't do hard work back then. So again, let's just think about this logically, all right? You're probably, chances are you're in school right now and chances are you hate it. Chances are you can't even study for more than two minutes or three minutes or whatever it is because what do you do when you're outside of school? You <sighs> and watch the hub, you play video games constantly and those are two of the most overstimulating activities that you can do. Two of the easiest things that you can do. Two of the most fun and rewarding things in the moment for your brain. So now your benchmark is that. Your benchmark is overstimulation. So then when you go to sit down and do some level of studying or even just read three pages. Three pages. Your brain is like, fuck this. This is hard. Why can't we just go back to playing the video games? Why can't we just go back to the hub? And huh. It's all relative. You see, because once you actually step away from the instant gratification and the overstimulation, now your brain can adjust and rewire. So when you go to sit down and study, maybe for just five minutes, okay, now it's a little easier, right? Because throughout that day, you haven't gone on the hub, you haven't played video games yet. So for me, when I was writing that 10 page paper, I had all these pulls from different instant gratification activities. Like I had smoked weed that morning and it wore off a couple hours later. So then I was itching and fiending for more. I wanted more of that high while trying to do hard work. I had the vape next to me that I kept ripping over and over. Like I'd write one sentence and then, oh, let's rip my vape now. My phone was right in front of me going off. Snapchat's coming in, Instagram messages coming in, whatever. Of course my brain all day long was thinking about going back to my dorm room, smoking weed and playing video games. Cause that's easier. And we as humans, we, we chase that comfort. We don't wanna do the hard things. So this is why you have to rewire your brain and actually trick your brain to do hard things and to like doing hard things. So let me explain how I was able to trick my brain to like doing hard things, okay? And it comes down to your dopamine levels. And I'm not a scientist, so I'm not gonna like nail the science here, but I can explain it to you in a better way, in an easier way to understand, all right? So we all have dopamine. It's our motivation chemical, okay? And when you're playing video games, when you're watching The Hub, your motivation to do those things is skyrocketed, right? You have a huge spike in dopamine. Those are the easy, cheap dopamine activities, even just like binge watching Netflix eating junk food, all the instant gratification activities that we try to avoid, right? And that lead to long-term pain. Those all spike your dopamine levels. 
And remember, dopamine is the motivation chemical in your brain. So after it spikes like that, after you just watch the hub for, for an hour, it crashes and now you have no motivation, none. But oh, a little bit later, you're now motivated to go back to the hub. So your dopamine spikes again, and it goes lower and lower and lower until you literally have a baseline of like negative, whatever. It, like just to put a number on it, your dopamine levels go so low that you just feel depressed. The only things that give you satisfaction now are the easy activities, are the video games, are the hub, the, the P hub. So now it's impossible for you to just sit down and do hard work. So to hack your brain and to use dopamine to your advantage, you have to do what is called a dopamine detox, where you stop indulging in so much instant gratification. I'll tell you when I finally quit the hub and stopped, huh, and stopped playing video games and stopped scrolling on social media, I finally was able to enjoy doing that hard work because my dopamine levels reset. And now the things that actually were harder for me before now become easy, like picking up a book and reading 10 pages. That became easier because my brain was no longer addicted to the pleasure. It was no longer like I had quit these things for quite a while. And over time, you can rewire your brain to now like doing the hard things, which in reality shouldn't be that hard. But for you and I, we've been addicted to pleasure for however long it's been. So of course the pleasurable cheap dopamine activities are way more fun than the hard work of just sitting down and maybe reading a book or studying or working on your business, whatever it may be. Of course those activities are gonna pull us deeper and deeper and deeper. So by cutting them out, by saying, no, I'm not gonna indulge in all this instant gratification and replacing it with good habits, with the delayed gratification activities, you will trick your brain to like doing these activities. You will start to enjoy meditating, start to enjoy reading, start to enjoy just going outside and going for a walk. You will start to enjoy doing hard work, like studying or working on your business, editing, whatever it may be. Because guess what? Now these activities are the most fun part of your day. So of course your brain is gonna enjoy doing them now. They're the most fun part of your day. Like for me, reading is one of the most fun parts of my day now. And here's a trick. If you haven't already, get out a piece of paper or get on your freaking notes in your iPhone and write down a timetable of exactly what you should be doing every single day, like your ideal day. I'll show mine on screen somewhere and only include the good habits, only include productive habits and try to follow that as best as possible. So now you're just cutting out the instant gratification and you're only doing the good habits and the delayed gratification and soon you will rewire your brain and actually like doing the hard things. It's a way better way to live life, bro. I'm telling you from experience, it's a way better way to live life because you know just as well as I do that instant gratification is a trap. It will make you depressed. Chances are you already are depressed. I've been there, it's no fun, but this is the answer. Cut out your bad habits. Stop playing so much video games, bro, because video games are just as stimulating as porn damn near. So it's gonna be the best part of your day. You know this, you know that playing video games is the most fun part of your day. Just like back when I used to play them, playing 2K for me, bro, NBA 2K was so fucking fun. I had a my player and I would just sit there trying to level him up, trying to get Hall of Fame three point badges, or whatever they are. I forget like the terms and shit, but <sighs> Hall of Fame brick wall, Hall of Fame dimer. like. <laughs> Man, I'm getting nostalgic right now because that shit is so fun. Like even now after being away from it for so long, like it's so addictive that if I were to pick it up again, I'd get hooked like that. Scary stuff. But I have been able to rewire my brain to actually enjoy doing hard things like recording this video. That's what I want for you, bro. That's what I want for you. Just to recap, a dopamine detox is the answer. Cut out the instant gratification as much as you can. Here's another couple tricks I'll give you, all right? When you wake up first thing in the morning, that is when your brain is the freshest. So if you're still gonna indulge in instant gratification, at least push it to the end of your day. The only instant gratification that I really indulge in right now is I watch some movies or a little anime at times with my girl at nighttime, but I get all my work done throughout the day before I choose to indulge in that instant gratification. Because I know in the morning, like it's morning time right now, my brain is the freshest and I'm able to spit this message to you with mental clarity because I didn't wake up and immediately browse my phone. No, that's a trick. Put your phone away. Put it on. Do not disturb, bro. Like, who cares? What notifications are you getting that are actually important? It doesn't matter. Put your phone away when you're trying to do work. I think I just jumbled up these tips, but anyway, you get the point, bro. You only have a, a limited amount of brain power every day. And if you're wasting it on instant gratification, you will not be able to do hard work that day because now your brain knows, I'd rather do that. I'd rather play video games. I'd rather go on the hub. Fuck this hard work. It, like, it'll be like a hundred times harder for you to now sit down and do work if you indulge in some sort of instant gratification early on in the day. I guarantee it. 
So do all that hard work early in the morning and also put your phone on do not disturb. Like I cannot believe that I tried to write a 10 page paper. Somehow like it took me 10 hours, but I wrote that 10 page paper with my phone right in front of me with notifications going off all day. That's just, that's BS. That's not how you get into a deep workflow at all. That's like the worst thing you can do. But anyway, with that said, leave a like if you want, leave a comment if you want, and you are welcome to join our Brotherhood Discord. The link is in the description. I will see you in the next video. Peace.